Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video I'm going to be customizing this knife using my Epilog Iris camera. Let's get into it. Alright, so when I open the laser up, the camera is right here on the lid. So when I'm looking at this, I want to position my product, which is the knife, as close to centered underneath of this camera as possible because that will give me the best visual representation. So I'm just going to place the knife where I think it is centered and I'm going to actually close the lid and look over top of this spot because this is where the camera is and just make sure it looks centered and right now it does. So what I need to do is boot up the machine and get that going. While the machine is booting up, there's a couple things to keep in mind. So first is the one I already showed you, which is make sure that you place the object underneath the camera directly, if at all possible. This is going to be the most accurate place for the camera to work. The second one is I'm going to need to focus the machine to the actual product so that the depth or the Z height is the correct height in order to get the best image. So once this boots up, I'm going to show you how I manually focus to that. And then I will go over to the software side and show you what to do. I already lowered the laser bed so that the head of this is higher up than the material. So what I'm going to do is jog the laser head over above the product. And I'm going to use the manual focus gauge that came with my machine and put that right into place. The spot of your manual focus may be on the side here. Since this was a beta unit, mine is on the front. I'm going to jog it over the wood and then slowly raise the laser bed until it touches the wood. Just like that. Now that the laser is focused to the product, I'm going to go ahead and shut the lid. Make sure that you return the laser to the home position and then I'm going to go over to the software. You're going to have to close the lid in order for the camera to show up correctly on the software side. Now that the product is in the machine, let's go ahead and check out the software. So first up is I'm going to launch the Epilogue dashboard. And in here, because I don't have a job sent over yet, all I see is my actual image. Now I can play with the contrast and whatnot to get a clearer picture, but the wood and the black stand out enough on this for me that I can see it just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to this button at the top that says copy background image, and I'm going to click that. Then I'm going to launch my design program. So from here, I'm just going to make a new document that is the size of my laser bed, which is 12 inches by 24 inches, and get that set up. So now I'm going to paste that picture with control V and as you see, it takes up the entire artboard. So now I can design to my product. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lock this layer in place and start a new layer. Now I can start working on the product itself. So what I want to do here is I'm actually going to trace the border of this project. So what I want to do is so because this is going to take a while, I'm going to go ahead and probably time lapse the tracing portion and then we'll get into the design part. Now that I have the sections of the knife trace that I want to work with, I'm going to go ahead and start the design. Now keep in mind, you want to keep the machine on and the part in place the entire time this is happening, because if you change anything about that, it's going to throw off your design and your placement. With that in mind, let's go ahead and start designing the knife. So here I'm going to actually turn off that layer that had the camera and I'm going to change all of my colors from white that I had originally 
to a red so that they're easier to see. And I want to keep my design elements within these boundaries. So one of the first things I want to do is actually throw my logo in here. So I'm going to copy that from a file I have already and scale that down. And I'm going to put that right here. Whoops. And I'm going to position that right here on the knife. And I also want to add in some text. So I actually want to put in maker and put it in my logo text. And I'm going to put that here. Let's see if I can actually fit all of it. So originally I was going to put it on this section, but as you can see, the shape cutout into this makes that a little difficult. So what I want to do is try to fit it all in this one spot. So by condensing it some, it looks like I can make that work. So hopefully this design will all work out. You know, things come up. It is an experiment in general, figuring out how I want to engrave this. Now that I have my logo on here, I'm actually going to take a design that I've done in the past. So I have that open here. I'm going to copy this and just bring a copy over to this file and make it a lot smaller. Now, it may be better if I, let's see, it may be better if I do take the full image and scale it like so, send it back. And you can kind of see where things are going to land. move it around. So I do want more space around my logo. So I'm going to offset that path a little bit more. Like that. So now my logo will pop out just a little bit more. So now I want to keep what's inside of here. So I'm going to actually there we go. So make it a clippy mask. I'm going to send this to the back. And I also want to make this so it doesn't engrave. like so, make this so it doesn't engrave by making it white as well, and have something like that. So this actually looks pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this over in two different pieces. So this, this part that goes on the metal, I'm going to make blue. I'm actually going to <coughs> Ignore the border when I get over to the software, but I think this looks pretty good. So I'm going to just save it so that I have a copy of it. Go ahead and I'm going to send this over to the machine software. So now that we're here, here's the machine software. I can see the camera already. And you can see exactly how it's going to line up. So there is white in it that won't engrave. Uh, there's also the black that will engrave. You can see it goes all the way up to the border. So here I'm going to split this out by color. I'm going to turn off the red. The blue is going to be metal. So I'm not really sure. Let's see if there's some settings. Aluminum, I'll use that. I'm going as a baseline. I'm going to do 500 DPI and Stucky. And then 
I'm gonna do that one last. So I'm gonna drag the process down in the tree to go last. Actually, what is, so this vector I don't want to do. So I'm gonna turn that off. The engraving I'm going to do as, let's say 80% speed. We can do, we'll do 50% power. Stucky and do bottom up as well and kind of see where that lands. And I'm going to go ahead and send this over to the machine and see what happens. So full disclosure, I don't know if this is gonna work or not based on just the design elements. So the process works. You can see that I can engrave to the shape that I want to. Uh, it's more of if my settings are correct and it actually shows up on the item. So I'm gonna go ahead and print this and see what happens. Okay, so the job did send over to the laser. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit go and let you watch it. Now that you've seen the laser working, here is the final result. So let me try to get this in focus. There we go. So I have the brand name across the knife. You can see the logo and you can see all of the different pieces. So this actually looks really, really good. I did put a little bit of cutting board oil uh, just on the wood piece to help protect it but it has all of those elements. If I get in too much closer, it's not gonna focus, but you can see them there with the light hitting it. I do think something like this is a really cool application for the camera to do one-off projects to custom shapes and have it only engrave right up to the edge, miss all the screw holes. So you can actually see that there's no engraving on the screw holes or anything. And there's no way I would have been able to do that without the camera because I wouldn't have been able to see it properly or be able to account for it properly. So I do think that this is a great way to do it. Uh, full disclosure, I did take the clip off the back, which is where that uh, spot is with the ridge. And then I just put it back together and I engraved the back side of this. A project like this is the perfect opportunity to use a feature like the camera and honestly, if somebody brought me a project like this and wanted to do this in the past, I would not have done it. With the camera, I can do it now. It makes it more comfortable and you can do more creative things because you can account for all the different shapes. You can account for the screws and everything in between. And it turns out really well. So hopefully this video has been helpful. It's been fun making this, so I don't get to make a lot of just like cool, fun, one-off projects. I do more custom client work. Uh, so this was a nice little project that was just for me. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. If you have ideas for future videos, please let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for new content to produce. But I want to thank you again for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.